Lab Rats and welcome to the Metal Lab Podcast with me, Rich and Tom. Hey guys, well Rich, this is podcast number nine. Yeah, I know, it's uh, coming along quite nicely isn't it? Um, starting to get out there, starting to actually get to see some of these bands, which is what we'll be touching on in yeah, a bit. Yeah, I that. remember when we first spoke about doing the podcast and that's like nine months ago now. Doesn't seem that long does it? Well I think when we, yeah, I think it was about a year ago when you first started mention about it so yeah it has absolutely flown but i can't believe it's been nine months but i think obviously the pandemic had a lot to do with that yeah definitely and then the, some of the amazing bands that previously were played on as mm-hmm. well the podcast has just yeah. been absolutely brilliant yeah it's been great so keeping in with that tradition let's open up with a fantastic band so who are we actually going to be listening to first well this band was one of the bands who entered our battle of the bands very um, nice yeah so they, I think they were against Vendetta, local people band. Okay, um, yeah. So yeah, so they they marginally lost, which but there's no no winners or losers in the battle of the bands. No, so, all winners. Yeah, exactly. It's just a great exposure for all bands. But this band are called Nassau, and they're from Glasgow, and the track is called Satan. Let's go. <laughs> Nassau with Satan. So after that opening screeching Mm. uh, of a track, I wasn't really expecting where it headed. It was very sort of a different sort of mix as well with sort of the punk and the death metal sort of thing. It's really nice to bring all the the different influences into sort of the music as well. Yeah, I mean that scar element, obviously you hear some bands that do sort of parodies of Mm -hmm. different styles and this was nothing like that. This fitted so well. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, it was something that I hadn't really heard before, that sort of metal scar Mm. mix, but that was done really, really well. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. So obviously 
now that pandemic is starting to slowly ease a little and we're getting to actually go out and see, we actually managed to go to a couple of gigs, haven't we, Tom? So uh, who was the first uh, yeah, few bands got to see? We went to the invite only, didn't we? It was sort of like a secret sort of garage location. I think it was yep. the end of the year bi biker. Day, yes, there yeah, was so some really nice bikes yeah. there too. We've done some um, really cool media stuff there. Um, so the headlining band was the Tokyo Rankers. Mm -hmm. They're from Peterborough. Yeah, They're like an band. old school sort of punk band. Yeah, um, And then from Leicester, joined them was another punk band they've been around for a long time the glory yeah that was uh, yeah. Cool. yeah really, really cool. good fun nights yeah that was a really good night visits from other sort of ex sort of local bands as yeah. well so we were on the scene sort of supporting the night so it was a really good friendly night which is good to see local music getting back you know, yeah, and yeah. especially even though there were still certain restrictions and the numbers of people Definitely. obviously it had a bit large open areas mm -hmm. it worked really really well and it was actually just nice to go out and actually hear some real live music. Exactly. So talking of some great bands, um, let's lead into our second band. So who have we got next? So this band is from South Wales, they're called Incursion. We've done a little bit of promo, if you remember, a couple of months ago. For we did, track, yes. Head of the Snake. Yeah. So we've done a five day teaser, yeah. which was really cool. Yeah, so really the band, track. Yeah, so, um, so this band that we have is called Scourge. Oh, very nice. Let's go.
so that was Scourge by Incursion. Um, so that obviously was another great track. Mm, very cool, yeah. So yeah, so there was sort of just some really nice sounds and there was a bit reminiscent of almost like a Fear Factory yeah, kind like of Yeah, tech sounds, yeah, it was really yeah. cool, so it's sort of quite relentless drumming as well. It, yes. It, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't think I'd keep no, that up, no. No, them double foot sort of kicks and everything, unbelievable, it really was. No, great. Um, it was more. It was more of a fuller sound though than what you get from sort of Fear Factory. Yeah, you know it, I mean? it's nice yeah. to hear sort of the progression of some of those bands. Obviously, back in the nineties, definitely it used to be if there was four members in the band that you didn't miss having a fuller sound necessarily. Yeah. But obviously, over time, there seems to be a draw towards mm. those big sounds. So obviously, with the keys and everything, in with this, yeah, no, another great track from another great band. So yeah, make sure you check them out. Excellent. So, obviously. We've been quite lucky and we've actually been to a couple of gigs since our last podcast. So um, the next one, obviously, there's a few more bands. Obviously, restrictions have lessened a bit. So, mm. again, this was a little bit more intimate with a few more people, which, again, was really nice to see people actually coming out to see these bands. So, yeah, it's yeah. nice. Yeah, we headed really over was. to uh, Mama Liz's in Stamford. Yeah, um, really nice venue. Yeah, it was um, obviously done by Crystal Lake Promotions and Dean does a great job of. Yeah. obviously getting all the bands together and everything so that's yes. a you know, great night as well um, so I think it was Own Your Life yeah. and then from Leicester it was Must Kill and then we had the one man death metal band Foul Body Autopsy yeah, he yeah. was really cool that was really um, interesting a yeah. few little sort of you know glitches at first well, do you know what so yeah so unfortunately when we first came on mm. unbeknown to him yeah. The rest of the tracks weren't necessarily weren't playing at the time, yeah. and so it was just him with his guitar. And so, which actually, it was like, oh, okay, man with his guitar. And then all of a sudden, you realise, oh no, there's so much more to go with this. And the rest of it kicked in. You're like, oh, I see, you are a one man band, not yeah. just a man with a guitar. Yeah, exactly. that was uh, yeah, that was really great. Yeah, and then obviously we had Pete the headline, and obviously Vendetta. Who yep, good we'll, Vendetta we always boys. give a good mention to anyway, and support the local music scene. So yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, so make sure you start getting out there and go into your local gigs. Uh, keep out. In fact, come over to the Metal Lab page uh, mm-hmm. every Thursday. We invite bands to come and tell us where their gigs are, are what's going on. Uh, where to get tickets and again if you're looking for something to do check out the page uh, visit these bands go follow the links uh, make sure you uh, check out everything that's going on go support your local scene the only way to have a local scene is for yeah. people to actually participate and as much as it's sort of on the bands and on the venues yeah. to put these things on people have to actually be willing to get up and go out and go to these shows. It is the easiest way as well. It's like when companies used to print off a thousand flyers. Yeah. Okay. I don't need to print off a thousand flyers. I can send that flyer, digital flyer to you. Yeah. And you can send it to 30 of your friends. Yeah, exactly. That costs nothing. Yeah. And that obviously spreads out more, you know? And you're getting the target market as well, aren't you, with that? Yeah, so... Which is absolutely amazing. Yeah, so make sure you check out any shows that are going on. Check out the Metal Lab page on a Thursday. Uh, If you're in a band, make sure you put all your gigs that are upcoming on there. Uh, We'd love to hear from you. And we've got our artist showcase as well. So if you're an artist or a band that have any new raw material in the studio that no one's seen before, let us know and we can put it on um, our artist showcase and we can obviously showcase that on the page. Yeah, exactly. And if you're an events um, promoter, mm, definitely. Uh, have a check out the page, check out all these fantastic bands. On there, there's a list of, I think there's quite about 100 or a couple of hundred bands on there mm-hmm. now. It's really getting uh, quite big, which is awesome. Check out, if you're looking for an act uh, to play any of your shows, go on there, check out these bands. Um, there's some amazing underground music out there. Um, and the Metal Lab's the place to find it. So exactly. make sure you head on over. Yeah. So let's uh, carry on with our music for this show. So who have we got up next on? It's a bit like us travelling around the world today, isn't it? So, it, it's you know, so we started uh, off in Glasgow, got? then into South Wales, yep. and then we're going to uh, Adelaide in South Australia. Oh wow, okay, yeah. so quite a exactly. way around the world. Yeah, this is a band who, again, um, they were in the Battle of the Bands. They won They won Battle of the Bands. Oh, um, very nice. Yeah, so that's cool. So obviously they had their um, interview on yep. the Berg Studio with France Planet. Um, this is a Shout track. Friends. Yep. This is a track called "Killed by Hate," and the band are called Sedulous Rouse. Let's go.
that was Sedulous Rouse with Killed by Hate. Mm. So yeah, so that in mind that had sort of tones of old, bit of uh, made and some of those yeah. older 80s kinds. Metallica of, sort of, metal, of yeah. Ryan, yeah, very um, cool. Yeah, very yeah. nice. And it's different as well from different countries where maybe you've got Australia and then like you've got, you know, Iran and stuff, but it seems like wherever they're from, the influences are very much the same, aren't they? Well, you know there seems I mean? to be that metal yeah, influence that seems to spread across, yeah, which is, well, I think, which is what brings us all together. It's really, really cool, that, though, uh, isn't it? Underlying, yeah, metal. Regardless how far people are, they still have, you know. Well, I think when you've been doing your metal around the world, I think mm. that's come to show yeah. sort of how cohesive exactly. metal can be yeah. and how much it's not only been a voice for people to let out their inner struggles, but also as a voice to let other people hear what's going on. Definitely. Um, yeah, it's been uh, really especially, great. Especially with some of the music censorship that some countries do have, it is amazing that, you know, we listen to some tracks and think, oh my God, how can they actually, you know, It's one of like those that. strange things, isn't it, where you know that in, well, I suppose even for us when we were growing up, there mm. was that little bit of resentment towards yep. metal and, Especially black metal. It yes. was, oh no, that's the devil. You can't yes. can't have anything to do with that. To think that there's still that prejudice. That's not just prejudice in terms of oh no, you shouldn't listen to that. The fact that there's real harm being done to exactly. people just because they enjoy listening to a certain yeah. type of music. It's yeah, something it's horrible. That really shouldn't exist. Yeah, yeah, that is crazy. Well, on that sombre point, uh, obviously there are some great things about um, the world, and one of those things is that we've uh, is technology, and that technology has allowed us to have some online interviews with some people. So Definitely. you actually managed to catch up for uh, with Metal Form Psycho Drive. Yeah, that's right. Uh, lead vocals box are king. So check that out on the Metal Lab. That's under live interviews. Um, so yeah, that was a really cool interview as well. Yeah, it's, and again, it's nice to still be able to meet up and chat with people, if not in person, at Definitely. least online, and yeah. to still have those connections of out there. And I think when you were talking as well, you managed to you were speaking about obviously those connections that are still there and how important some of those things are for people. Um, yeah, and again, it's one of those things that if you're into metal and you want to help build a community, then come over to the Metal Lab. Yeah. It's what we're trying to do. We're trying to be a place where everyone can come and find something that appeals to them, find their new next yeah. favourite band and there's, there's just no, help people. There's no egos here, never no. has been. You know, we're here to support live local music, wherever you are, you know, underground music. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, you and know? again, with our Battle of the Bands, yeah. um, again, the, the whole idea of that is to help give exposure to new up and coming bands so whether you've got one follower yeah. or a hundred follower or a thousand followers definitely uh, come get in contact at the metal lab yeah uh, become part of the metal lab army and yeah the labra army and start yeah. uh give yourself a chance to actually become bigger than you are at the moment and yeah. that's what we're offering really a platform for people to be able to participate and because of our love for the music is obviously we want other people to experience that as well. So come over if you're in a band and you fancy uh, the chance of having your music played on a radio station over at Berg Studios um, and a radio interview yeah, as well as exposure all, from us. Or other UK stations that we work with. I mean, we, you know, yep. we work with the Exam Island as well. Yep. With Kylie and Nate at Scotland Rock. So yeah, definitely. A, you know, UK station as well. So And some, some people might not want to sort of send stuff in because they might have that perception that maybe no one likes their music or they don't think they're good enough but this is the okay, definite so. platform absolutely to you know put, put your stuff on here because yeah there is always going to be people that will like your stuff yeah if, if you enjoy playing it there will be somebody else that enjoys listening to it exactly and we're here to help give you that audience so talking of giving people an audience who we got up next so we've got a band from Woking called Gut Locker Oh, uh, they, nice. Yeah, these guys have been working really hard on their new stuff. Okay. Um, so the track that they've sent over to us to play is Bitter Memory. Let's go. Yeah.
was Gut Locker with Bitter Memory. Mm. So, yeah, another sort of fantastic band. Yeah, really sort of stomping sort of track, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, it was, yeah. Yeah, it certainly never gave uh, up the ghost at any point with that. Yeah, it was a it's very phenomenal. sort of mixture between sort of hardcore, the vocals at the sort yeah. of start, and then this little, the black metal screeches, yeah, which was quite, it worked quite well, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It really did. It was really cool. Again, I think it's one of those, those songs where if you hear it on sort of, oh yeah, it's black metal with stomping mm. hardcore, you think, well, that's not going to work. Yeah. But uh, obviously it does. And I know how hard Craig and the boys have really worked to release this stuff. You know, they've mm. really, really worked really hard. So yeah, kudos to them. It sounds great. Yeah, fantastic stuff. So obviously uh, here at the Metal Lab, our aim is to help promote music and to obviously give you the very best in music but obviously it's not just us that do that there's other people so mm -hmm. as mentioned before sound pylon obviously yep, they definitely. were carly and nathan were with us at the beginning for the metal yeah, lab definitely obviously we, they've been know, going from strength yeah. to strength themselves yeah they've joined scotland rocks radio they've just become you know that's their second home now isn't it yeah. you know it's really cool it's it was nice to be on that journey with them because when the sound pylon started they were you know part of our family mm -hmm. you yeah. know and they still are but you know they've branched out like a bigger brother and they've gone yeah. and done their own thing with scotland watch radio which has been really cool yeah know? and again so yeah so if you want to hear some awesome rock go uh, go mm. check out sound pile on over on scotland rocks uh, radio definitely um obviously we also have fans over uh fans the planet uh, Berg studio. Berg studio so yeah shout out to them obviously helping us promote the music that we find on the metal lab Again, check them out, listen to the music that they play. And again, if you fancy the chances of being one of the bands that gets played on a radio station that has a worldwide audience, yeah. uh, then come over to the Metal Lab, uh, become, uh, join the uh, Battle of the Bands, um, and yeah, have your chance to actually get heard by uh, the world, basically. I think that global exposure is something that is really cool. You know, if you're yeah. from I don't know, a little town in the West Midlands, and and you think, oh, no one's ever heard of me. Yeah. And then you get played on a radio station in South Africa. Wow. Yeah. You know. I, I know. And again, the interview as well, so a chance for you to actually talk about your music to uh, the world, basically. So, yeah, so come on over to uh, the Facebook page, uh, join them, uh, the Metal Lab group. Um, get in contact with Tom. Um, yeah, definitely. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. And I think as well with you, when, when, you know, when we first started mm -hmm. all this, your sort of metal knowledge sort of waned a little bit, hadn't yeah, it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know? yeah. And I think with with the metal lab as well, and us reaching out to people from different countries and with France, new bands have come into the fold from all over yeah. the world. You know, yes. and I know that one of the bands that you really like, like the Sprays from Iran. You know, they've released some really really cool stuff, haven't they? Yeah, there's an, a, yeah, like you said. It's, mm. So for me, it was yes, I, I fell out of not out of love of metal mm. but it was um, just something that life takes over and it yeah, wasn't something definitely. going to gigs and that was something that seemed to slowly disappear from my life mm. uh, but getting back into it now and jumping in with both feet and listening to what's out there it's amazing to see the progression of some of these bands so obviously yeah. there's those familiar tropes that you hear through all of these or oh, that sounds like Maiden or Metallica but the fact is, I love Maiden and Metallica, so yes. having those elements now, but with a modern twist on it, hearing those elements, like with the bands we've been hearing today, whether yeah. it's 
that black metal yeah. with a scar yeah. mix and yeah. it's just well where did that come from and yeah. it's yeah just amazing that there's all of this music out there and yeah. it's timeless as well isn't it you know you know in the next 10 or 20 or 30 years that there's still going to be bands who are coming mm-hmm. who are still going to have that little scar or black metal element Those in bits, it yeah. and that's what's timeless about this kind of music isn't it that it's never going to be dead no, I'd, you know, yeah. I'd, there's always going to be those people that mm, love metal. Definitely. And um, talking of loving metal, uh, our next band? Yes, well, they're from Indonesia, so I've done obviously my Metal Around the World in Indonesia, so make sure you check that out mm-hmm. on Metal Around the World on the Facebook page. So, yeah, this band is called Human Error. Great, and what's the name of the track? The track that we're going to play is Kelam. Let's go. Human error with a Kalam. So another great band. Really weird as well because obviously when I was doing my my research on Indonesia and Indonesian metal, it was like some of them, like you know, the places in Indonesia, like um, they have private metal gigs right up okay. in the hills because, oh, like you know, they would they're not allowed to put them on. So this right. is oh, right. really okay. cool. Yeah, and to to see that sort of vocal sort of death grind sort of sound coming from them mm-hmm. that aggressiveness you know what i mean from a country like indonesia you think wow so amazing. do you think because of the censorship over there do you think that drives some of that the anger that's sort of showing through that music yeah and i think the musicianship as well i mean look how good of musicians that they mm-hmm. actually are you know and for me for someone that doesn't really know indonesia they've done research on the culture and everything i think how do they manage to become that good? Where do they learn? You know, surely there can't be that many sort of musical-based schools that you know like teaching metal no, specifically. No, exactly. No, I know so you know, it's actually quite amazing that a group of guys have got together and really sort of brought you know brought this sound out, which is just it amazes me as a non-musician. It really does. Well, I suppose that that's quite reminiscent of the early rock and roll. How that all started, mm. and the fact there were small groups of musicians who were coming together who were spreading ideas and I suppose in a place Definitely. like that there's going to be that secrecy but that's also going to be that driver of becoming mm-hmm. the best out of those groups 
we, yeah, it's uh, sad that the conditions they're in are such, but it's uh, fan- the music is absolutely fantastic. And all it takes is for someone just to notice them as well. I mean, mm-hmm. I remember reading about Calibre, um, who were from Iran, yeah. and obviously, you know, they got arrested and they got done for all the censorship and everything, mm-hmm. and now they've obviously got a big metal label and they've been taken out of the yeah. country and, you know... Managed to make it. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's amazing. It's just that one lucky bite, isn't it, that you need. Yeah, and is, again, it's just getting your music out there and guessing it heard by the right people, really. And But then saying that, these days, being able to produce your own music, being able to put it out there, whether it's on SoundCloud or, yeah. or YouTube or wherever, there does seem to be a way for musicians to start building their own um, marketing, really, yeah. and everything, their own labels that goes along with that. I know for me, looking into some of the, the metaverse stuff and the NFT world, uh, and the fact that they're starting to be music sites now, there's one I was reading about called Audius, and for them, they'll pay their musicians in cryptocurrency. Mm. And so with that, that comes with all the benefits of the artists actually owning their art. Nice. And so every time someone buys something, they always get a kickback from it, and that is for in perpetuity. So, if they're selling something that then becomes very, very desirable, all of a sudden that increases in value for them as well, for which they also get kickbacks. Which we're in full support of. Yeah, so it starts. So there are there are things that are starting to change to sort of help young bands and new bands actually get the value for their own music. But it is slow in starting, and so it is still difficult at the moment. And sometimes the best people to promote is the bands themselves. Yeah. You know, well, they know their music better exactly, than Exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, I've seen over the past two years of growing the group that, you know, there's certain band members that have actually said, you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll try this ourselves. Yeah. We don't need the label. We'll yeah, go out exactly. there and we'll do it and we'll make a success of it. And some of them really have given it a really fucking good good yeah. go. Well, I think these, the reality is that record labels need to know that the bands are actually going to work and make their money within the business of making Definitely. money, not just making music. And it's more a case of by the time you're almost doing that yourself, mm-hmm. that's when the labels are ready to take you on. Yeah. And so it's almost that cat and mouse game of, okay, we've got to this point by ourselves, do we carry on doing it by ourselves? Or do we then go with the label? Because obviously they have that little bit more expertise, but by that point, hopefully you've got enough expertise to be able to do it yourself. Definitely. So. Yeah, obviously, we're probably saying for bands to promote themselves. Obviously, we like to promote us. Um, we don't ask bands for any money for any of the promotion we do no. for them. Um, we'd like to make sure that we can offer our advice and any help we can for free. That's the whole point for mm-hmm. unsigned on the ground bands to help them, not to hinder them, no. to give them a free platform for them to actually get their music out there. That being said, we do have some merch to sell uh, from the Metal Lab and we would very much appreciate it. Uh, Showing your support by maybe coming along buying a t-shirt, maybe a Mm -hmm. glass, some placemats, uh, some of the other fantastic stuff that we have. We've even got Christmas jumpers. We do have some Christmas jumpers. From um, Moomin Merchandise as well. So yeah, if anyone would like to PM me on Messenger, I can send you the links to Moomin Merchandise. We've now got the new logo yep very which nice i absolutely love and the artwork was done by will um, shout out to will yeah that he is from the death metal um black metal band uh, asma dame blood coven mm-hmm. yeah so yeah he was a really cool guy and yeah. he's designed this for us so i think that it just looks it's gives it that little bit more yeah you love know, it don't you i do i do i just think it, it finishes off the metal lab doesn't it? Yeah, it's uh, a very, yeah. very nice top. Um, and this has obviously been um, printed now by our UK, new UK t-shirt company, yep. Royal Ten Clothing. So if you go onto their site and search for Metal Lab, you'll see um, this t-shirt on there mm-hmm. and a double-sided hoodie as well. Yep. So, so, yeah, so for Christmas, any ideas, looking for some last-minute gifts, obviously uh, we'd very much appreciate your support with that. That's, yep, moving merchandise at the back here and then for this one is Royal Ten Clothing. So yeah so check out the Metal Lab and the links on there. So let's play our last song for today's podcast. So who have we got? We don't know because we can't decide can we what the actual name is so I'm gonna give it a shot in an Amalia. I I will go with that and apologies to the band um, for uh, 
for out butchering of that if that's not correct. And yep. what's the name of their track? Um, the name of their track is Eyes of Isis, but this this band come from Brazil. Okay. So they're a sort of female led vocalist as well, which is quite cool. Then I think you'll like this track. Okay. Let's go.
So that was Inamalia with Eyes of Isis. I think it's in an Amalia, but we'll, we'll, we'll go We'll with agree to disagree well. yeah. until we know better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was a great soundtrack. So strangely enough, yeah. in very much the same vein as the first track that we played tonight mm. uh, with Nasu, there was almost an Arabian-esque intro. Definitely. Uh, whereas Nasu yes. went into their scar. Mm. Um, these didn't go that way. These yeah, went into a darker, like heavier place. A melodic sort of death metal with a little bit of a Spanish Spanish sort of mix with it there, as well. It was a really nice mix. It, for me, it had, there was moments of, of reminiscence of Demi Borgia. Yeah, definitely. Uh, with, again, that big orchestral most yeah. composition that was going yeah. on there. Uh, but yeah, another great sounding band. I love it. It's just the underground scene is bursting at the seams. Well, it, to me, that was another example of those bands we were talking about, whereas in the 90s, the bands almost had space within their sound. So if it was just four or five of them, they mm. wasn't worried about filling out the sound so much, whereas no. today the, the sounds almost do, all seem to be much bigger. It seemed to be a much bigger soundscape, which is uh, um, just great. I think, as obviously a, a, the, the opinion from a non-musician, mm -hmm. what I've noticed in the last sort of two years of us, you know, being a part of the underground metal community is a lot of the stuff is not the same. Everything sounds completely different. Everyone's trying to, you know, be different from everyone else, which yes. is so cool, isn't it? You know, a lot of the mainstream bands you hear nowadays, they, they're all sounding the same, you know, all the deathcore and metalcore. There, right. There's a lot of, yeah. you know, bands that sound the same. But with the underground scene, it seems that, you know, you could listen to one band like Dying Oath, and they're completely different mm -hmm. to, you know, another band like Art Down, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. And none of them actually sort of sound the same, which is so cool, isn't it? Because that opens up so many new avenues in the yeah. next sort of three or four years for, you know, bands to actually get out there, and, you know. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I think you're right. And I think some of that is obviously people have access to all music yeah. now, so yeah. they can have those broad influences and bring them together in ways that people like us from our generation may not necessarily have heard or have thought that oh hang on that does fit in there there is yeah. that mix no that's yeah it's i think with us being the older we can see the we can sort of hear the older influences yes, definitely. but what i sort of grasp from it is a lot of bands they may take a little bit of an influence yeah but they put their they always put their own spin on it yeah and that's what's really cool like yeah you know i always go back to wormhaven when i first listened mm -hmm. to them and you know and i heard their album um, and I heard that track Vesuvius and I just thought, wow, it just blew me away. Yeah. The production, I'd never heard anything like it, Yeah, you know? And especially and thought, from a band that you hadn't heard of before yeah. that wasn't a big sign. And band. it was a breath of fresh air because sometimes you hear bands and you think, oh my God, this is just another, you know, another tribute band to Trivium or whoever. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these underground bands actually try and, you know, go to the next level to try and be completely different yeah they all seem so to cool. have something to say yeah which is definitely really, really nice so yeah so if you're out there craving some more awesome music mm -hmm. uh, so if you want some more insight into bands whether that's interviews um whether that's our battle of the bands um just come on over to the metal lab page uh, we'd love to have you uh, become part of the lab rat army um we really do want the underground metal scene to become more widely heard. Definitely. And we hope to be a part of that and a place where people can come and actually find their next new favourite band. We never want it to be mainstream because obviously that's not what it's about. I want the bands to be successful, and but it's always nice to have that sort of underground label, isn't it? Well, you this know. goes back to your previous arguments we've of had. Course it does. How point, you know. At what point do you say, well, no, you've got one too mm. many one too many people like you now, so we But it's nice that we're on that journey, and we're, you know, it we're is, helping yeah. people, you know, very much like Ben and Prison, I, yeah. you know, I, I've been with them from the start, you know, and now it's nice to just see Ben and Prison actually get, you know, what they deserve and be signed by Century mm -hmm. Media now, you know, but they yeah. still, they still act and their attitude are like an underground band, which is really cool, Yeah. you know, hopefully the fame doesn't obviously get to them like some people, Yeah. you know, and they well, still, you know, one keep, of the keep, dangers, isn't it, yeah. of uh, success? So make sure you come on over to the Metal Lab um, for all your news, reviews, and interviews. Join us at the Metal Lab, the home of underground metal.